Some of you being here today might be a parent or maybe a grandparent of a young child. If so, you may have experienced what I have when picking up my kids from daycare. Because we naturally want to know what our kids have been up to, so we ask, what have you been doing today? And I think that at least some of you can follow me when I say that a typical answer could be something like, I don't know, I can't remember, or maybe even nothing. One reason for this might of course be that the child just doesn't want to answer. However, research has shown that these kinds of open-ended direct questions are very hard for the child to answer, as they have to use the frontal lobes. And at a young age, the frontal lobes are still not matured. But when retrieving memories spontaneously, that is, memories popping up in the child's mind almost out of the blue, they don't have to use the frontal lobes in the same way. So this made me curious about what types of cues that typically trigger these spontaneous memories. And I can tell you that it is important for us to expand the knowledge about this. As for instance, sometimes a child might be the only witness of a crime. And knowing how hard it is for them to retrieve memories when asked directly, we have to think of other ways to get information from them. So, we explored the relevance of cues in two studies. In an experiment, the child was brought to the lab twice. At the first visit, I showed the child one of two amusing events, for instance, some singing teddies, which are hidden in one of two boxes. At the second visit, the child is left alone in the room, together with the parent, of course, uh, while we film where the child looks and what it says. And many children do talk spontaneously about the event remembered, although they can't see the hidden teddies. Also, on average, the children having spontaneous memories looked about five times longer at the box containing the event content compared to the other box. So this tells us that objects actually seem to enhance spontaneous memory retrieval. As for the second study, there's one thing I would like to highlight. Because here, the parents were so kind and they fulfilled the diary of the children's spontaneous memories, along with aspects such as cues. After doing this, I asked the children some questions about the last memories reported. And only about 20% of the children were able to answer one or more questions, which is very inter interesting because these were memories they had recently been talking about at home. So once again, this shows us that it's very hard for the children to retrieve memories when asked directly, if the relevant cues are not present. So next time you pick up your child from daycare, you might want to ask about his day in a slightly different way. Thank you for your attention.